Hello there. Welcome to Business Daily on Trust Television. This is where we keep you up to speed with major developments in the world of business, finance, investment, and generally the Nigerian economy. I am your host, Christiana Amodu Otinya. On today's edition of the program, we'll be focusing on the economic plans of the key presidential candidates of the top three presidents top three parties in the country. Now, as Nigerians await with bated breath the 2023 elections, there is a lot of curiosity with regards to plans put in place by leading presidential candidates towards revamping the Nigerian economy, which is in tandem to creating sustainable living standards for the nation's citizenry. On today's edition of the program, our focal point will be on the economic plans of Nigeria's leading aspirants for the presidency. On the run-up to the elections, I will be joined on the program by two gentlemen, Joseph Agwe, political and economic analyst, and Dr. Aliu Ilias, a financial analyst. They will be giving perspective to these issues, even as we take a cursory look at this plan. What, what are the intentions of this plan for the Nigerian economy? And basically, how are we going to ensure that the economy is propelled to was the part of prosperity because then that's what affects Nigerians going about their daily businesses. I'll hold my fire here, take a short break. When I come back, the program continue and you get to meet my guest. Please stay. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. This is Business Daily coming to you from Trust Television. Now I have my guest with me now in the studio. I have very close to my left Dr. Aliu Ilias. He is a financial analyst. And to my far left, Joseph Agui, political and economic analyst. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Now, just before we delve into the discussion of the day, we were able to put together some of the key highlights of these plans by these aspirants. And we, we selected the three major political parties because we know we have seen those people make wave, talking about Atiku Abubakar, Bola Ametinibu, and Peter Obi. We have seen a lot of conversations surround those three major political parties. Now, taking a look at, starting, starting with Atiku Abubakar, the 2023 economic agenda for, for him. Now, he's talking about a $10 billion 
dollars economic stimulus fund within his first 100 days in office. He has also vowed to privatize refinery rather than revitalize them, proposed legislation to remove electricity from exclusive lease, reaffirm the critical sector of private leadership and greater private sector participation in development, and also reaffirm the critical sector of private leadership and greater participation in development, repositioning the public sector to focus on its core responsibilities of facilitation and enabling appropriate legal framework for rapid economy and social development. Now, moving to the plan of Bola Ahmed Tinibu, talking about, okay, we still have that from, he's focusing on stimulating jobs, targeting real GDP growth of averaging 12% annually for the next four years, creating six new regional economic development agency, which will establish sub-regional industrial hubs, formulate a new national policy on agriculture to boost food production, promote the establishment of new commodity exchange boards, develop a national infrastructure plan which would cover strategic roads, bridges, rail, water, power, seaports, and airports, targets 15,000 megawatts distributable to all categories of consumers nationwide to ensure 247 sustainable supply within the next four years. Now moving to Peter Obi now to borrow for investment and not consumption. Liberalize the entire power sector value chain, including transmission to ensure ready, steady power supply, beg your pardon. Encourage the setting up of more local refineries by private sector. Limit government involvement in the power sector. Deal with the issue of insecurity by overhauling the entire security architecture. Pledge to bring fuel subsidy to an end. Now, let me come back to my guest now in the studio. Now, we have seen what have been put on paper by these presidential aspirants, especially to the run-up of the campaign season as expected to kick start. I'll start with you, Dr. Aliu Elias. Now, looking at that plan, let's have your assessment first before we delve into breaking it down. All right, the challenge of Nigeria economy for the new candidates are coming on board. The fact remains that whoever becomes Nigerian president in the year 2023 is facing a monumental economic challenge. And that's that as maybe the person has to like starts in the best way because if you miss it at the first six months nigeria will revolt mm -hmm. there is poverty in the land a lot of challenges more so uh the the first thing the person must look at is uh oil subsidy okay. now i assure you that three of them none of them can sustain managing the oil subsidy as it were today it has to be removed so nigeria should get up for more challenges as it were more so we look at economy i want us to really really move away from uh, supermarket uh, economic uh, policy. It's, it's not like that. So most people will think when I became the president is what I would, we are not talking about supermarket, a superstore, we're talking mm. about an economy. Yeah. When we talk about economy, a lot of things need to be put in place. You know, you have to like be strategic. You have to have short time plan, medium time plan and long time uh, plan. All these things will come together. To, and perhaps when you start government, we don't see the result up to maybe after three, four, five, uh, uh, maybe years, and you could see that uh, Atiku Abakari said he will hit the ground running with 10 billion uh, stimulus loan for MSME. I will agree that MSME remain the major focus that Nigeria should look into. But if you look at, if you want to like uh, look at three of them with what they are uh, bringing, let's start from uh, uh, Atiku Abakari. I think he's much more capitalist intensive, which is wrong for Nigeria economy. You cannot come that where we have Almajiri, uh, where we have people out of school, people cannot afford payment. You want to go into capitalism. In capitalism, winners take all. So where would the child of uh, average Nigerian be? If mm. you cannot afford uh, education, how will you? Health care, NHIS, a lot of things. That means you will take it away from the poor, and the poor will suffer more. And if you look at also coming to uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I think he's still, uh, he has not actually bring a blueprint, yes. but he still hold on with the, uh, 1999, 2000, uh, you know, economic analysis. You have to take away from, take yourself away from that old. You have to look, this is new time. You have to come with real time economics plan. Not that you'll be saying what you have practiced before in Lagos, what you have practiced in. No, no, no. You have to come up with something. Yes, he said you're going to organize the exchange, uh, commodity exchange, but what? it is there. Uh, or all these things are there already. What yeah. are you bringing to it? You go for a regional economic policy. Well, it's not a problem if you can sustain, but how are you making sure that Nigeria as a country, by the time all these regional come uh, to put things together, Nigeria will come out. And if you look at the uh, Obi uh, itself. Uh, well, for me, Obi keep on churning uh, statistics of other country. 
He, he has not told us how he's going to use it to better the life of Nigeria. You want to go for from consumption to what? Investment. Pro production. Yes. Now, production does not just come easy. It comes with power. It comes with energy. Mm -hmm. It comes with resources. It comes with economic uh, uh, focus and strategy. So you have to tell us what economic strategy are you putting in place and who is working with you. It's not about you as a single person. It's about Nigeria economy that we are talking about. Let me bring in Joseph now to the discussion. These plans are big on infrastructure. We're seeing seaports, we're seeing airports, we're seeing rails, we're seeing roads in these plans. That's across board now. And we are seeing that um, the Atiku Abubakar is pro-privatization. That's giving the mantle now to private investors and private individuals. Given the track record we have as a country in terms of privatizing national entities, do you think that is feasible and workable? I think it's, um, I, I think fundamentally, let me just, I'll, I'll start with this. Um, anybody can say anything. You know, politicians can um, say what, what, what we want to hear. So um, manifestos are cheap. But what we should interrogate is whether these people that are putting out these manifestos have the capacity or previous years um, experience to really deliver on these um, um, manifestos or their various uh, uh, manifestos. But uh, to answer your question, um, Atiku Abubakar, Alaja Atiku Abubakar is big on uh, liberalization. I mean, it's dangerous. I mean, uh, under Obasanjo, we saw privatization, NITEL, and so on and so forth. So, but we, we, because corruption was really not dealt with, all of that uh, privatization efforts, uh, we, uh, we, I mean, the, the effect is still yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, in so many places. So at the root, I mean, liberalization is not bad. Privatization is not bad. But what should come first is dealing with corruption and making sure that whatever process uh, we undertake in privatizing or liberalizing the economy is done transparently and um, in a very, very accountable way. So you think putting these national entities, talking about the power sector, key infrastructure now in the hands of private sector, yeah. is something that will work in, in the future going forward? I mean, if, if the a private sector player can show competence, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, if, if I want to privatize, let's say, um, if I want to sell a car to somebody, I would want to know if the person can drive. Uh -huh. If I want to sell an entity to somebody, I would want to know if that person can really make that uh, entity function. So at the core of privatization is making sure that the private sector player shows competence and also making sure that, you know, we saw how people uh, acquired uh, uh, public um, assets with borrowed money from banks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those banks have gone under. So, because that process was not really uh, transparent enough, I mean, a lot was waved away. We got into trouble with privatization. So privatization is not bad, mm -hmm. but we should ensure that it is done transparently and the private sector player is uh, made to show competence. Okay, just before we, we continue with this conversation, we spoke to some Nigerians and respondents, and they, 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 have, they have outlined what they expect from whosoever will become the president of Nigeria in 2023, especially in the front of the economy. Take a listen to what they had to say. The economy is in, is in a mess. It's in a total shamble. Looking at the exchange rate, honestly, we are not where we ought to be as a nation. So... The managers of the, the, the economy, and then Mr. President has a lot to do in, in this regard. Did you know that 10,000 naira, if you take it to the market just to buy food items, what you will bring, what you will, what 10,000 naira can purchase for you in the market, you will be shocked that if you have, if you are, if you are a family of two, it can't take you. I mean, the items you purchase cannot take a family of, of two individuals, you understand? So we are not talking about school fees. We are not talking about, I mean, other aspects that you have to spend on in order to keep life going for a family. Hence, the value the economy is not in favor of the families at all, at all. The incoming president have a lot to do in this regard. We are not 
looking at whether you are a Yoruba or whatever, an average Nigeria want to feel the impact of the economy. So it's not good here. Yeah. Right. Uh, I have become poorer because my, the money in my account has a lost value, and uh, the price of things keeps going up. I can't meet up buying things I normally buy in January. So the economy is really hard on my lifestyle, and uh, even giving offering in the church, my tithe have reduced because of uh, the economy. What I think uh, the, about the economy is that it's not good for us. Now, from the last responder there, saying even giving tight in his church has become a challenge. Now, we are seeing Nigerians harping on the value of the Naira, which translates then to standard of living in the country. Dr. Elias, let me start from you. Respond to what you just heard from those gentlemen. They're talking about, now I was given tight of so, so, so and so amount. Now the value of my money cannot even allow me to give more to God. It's only even good. I could even think about tight at this point in time. However, major problem of Nigeria is purchasing power. Mm. You know, you have uh, lit, uh, the money you have goes to the market and you can't bring anything uh, good home for it. But the thing is, let's look at our mainstay of the economy, which is the oil and gas sector. Now, if you look at the oil and gas sector, if, if you look at our for, the major foreign earnings of Nigeria is from oil and gas sector. So once it's down, dollar, everything, petrol dollar, what have you had, will definitely have a, a problem. So looking at that, if you look at Saudi Aramco, British uh, Petroleum, these are state-owned companies and they are doing very very fine so for me does nigeria should privatize all the refineries privatize it it will definitely not work because your hand must be there look let's look at um uh, power holding now it, it is privatized and it was privatized with portfolio like my brother was talking about corruption i think corruption is another problem if you look at the uh, uh the power holding it was privatized with portfolio those people did not bring any investment they came to nigeria go to nigerian banks get some money and invest uh, there and up to now there is no any value added to it uh, in fact they just control the transmission uh, company so these are the problems of so for any government that is coming has to really really sit down strategize on short time long time medium time and and long time and for short time like i said nigeria should brace up there will be removal of so poor subsidy for nigeria to survive because you know why from what we are seeing, Nigeria budget for 2023, it might be total deficit budget. Mm. And we should not expect a capital uh, investment or capital expenditure. We will even pray that it will meet the recurrence. If not, we'll keep on borrow, go cap in hand, borrow to pay our salary. So it is very serious problem that we must not even talk about privatization. We must combine our capitalism with what? Socialism. Because if you want to say you want to do, even in the, in, the, in, in the UK now, there is a serious problem. And the history and the story of Keynesian theory has came in now, whereby a government must come in to subsidize, you know, health, to subsidize energy to also even provide some stimulus food for people to survive mm -hmm. so if you now say you want to capitalize i want to do capitalism people will definitely pay for it in a negative way joseph let me bring you in now you heard the respondents speak about how basically the average nigerian going about their business they want to feel the impact of the economy and the impact of the economy then again translates to what they have in their pockets to spend the respondent there was talking about school fees for families what what are your thoughts on what how should we get it right on the run-up to the presidential elections I think uh, for 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 the, the for anyone that eventually becomes president in this country, there are so many line, land mines. Uh, first, we have a growing out of school population. Mm -hmm. That's 20 million. Uh, the last time we checked, we have um, un unemployment. That's uh, 60 million. 60 million youth are unemployed. We have um, ASU. I mean, uh, schools are shut down. Yes. Then we have uh, issues of unemployability. So. It is very, you know, there's the cost of living and standard of living um, um, arguments anytime we talk about um, economy. But if the, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just explain this with the headline, uh, the headline on Daily Trust newspaper. You know, the headline says uh, APC, despite generating billions, yeah. APC is still suffering uh, from cash uh, crunch. They're able to pay staff. 
uh, the people that uh, when committee members are yet to be paid uh, three months after uh, that committee was set up and the spokesman came out, came out to say that uh, the, the money still left is so that the uh, party can, can run. So that is an example or that is a, a way of explaining how Nigeria has been from 1999. We have over bloated public expenditure. Um, you see um, uh, presidents with very long uh, convoys. The president has nine uh, private jets. Uh, senators are um, enjoying different forms uh, and types of allowances. So we have over bloated government spending. So it's very important for the, whoever becomes president to really examine the cost of governance mm. and cut down the cost of governance. I mean, I mean, why, why, uh, the APC chairman is still uh, uh, earning salary, but some staff in APC are not uh, getting paid. So, uh, ASU, for example, is uh, under lockdown, but private universities uh, that are not very affordable uh, are still on. I mean, so cost of governance issue is very, very important. It needs to be addressed. Revenue also needs to be addressed. I, uh, uh, Article of Boca was talking about uh, 10 billion US dollars for stability of the economy. The question is, where are you going to get? Are you going to borrow again to stimulate uh, uh, MSMEs? The truth is that businesses are set up not to employ, but to make profit. So if you give a businessman more money, he will be looking at how he can maximize profit. He will be looking at technology to see how, how much uh, of people he can lay off so that he, uh, technology can take their place. So revenue needs, we need to have a very robust uh, discussion on revenue. Um, there's there's uh, gold mining in Zamfara, how much of it translates to revenue. There is oil that's been stolen, a lot, uh, very few translates to revenue. Uh, taxes, FRS, how much does it collect? How much, uh, so we need to really have a discussion on revenue. Then debts, our debt profile. I mean, it's, external debt alone is about six trillion <laughs> so we really need to sit down to ask ourselves, are we still going to go uh, out borrowing? And even if we're going to go out borrowing, what purpose are we going to uh, go out borrowing? Are we going to go out borrowing to pay salaries or go out borrowing, borrowing to take on some white elephant projects? So fundamentally, and it, I mean, finally, the issue of corruption, the government really needs to see how they can plug leakages and ensure that there is more transparency in, in, in government. I mean, reports, uh, we, the, the budget, for example, look at our budget performance. Yes. You know, we, we, we don't, uh, the, the budget performance, for example, is like, uh, we get 60%, 70% budget performance, or even less. So the money that is not even enough, we are not even able to really uh, take to full time. So uh, any, any person that becomes uh, president will really need to examine all of these issues. Dr. Elias, I want you to speak to the economic projection, especially for Bol Ahmed Tinibu. He talked about a 12% economic growth in the first four years. Is this rather not a tall order, considering the fact that we are still doing at about 3% thereabout? Well, if, if you recall when we were in recession, we have to spend our way out of recession. So the challenge is that where is going to garner these resources to uh, achieve this? But it's quite, quite achievable because if you look at what he said, he said it's going to set up a regional uh, uh, economic uh, agencies. Yes. So if he was able to set up this, and you know when you're setting up regional, the beauty of this is that you are going to center your focus on the strengths comparative advantage in that region. Perhaps we could say not. Maybe the uh, granules, you know, the tomatoes and what have yes. you. If you go to the south, you look at south, south, the oil, you know, Lagos, look at the seaport and what if you can we can governize all this. Mm -hmm. I think it's achievable. But another thing is that he is only the uh, the driver, what about the conductor? What about the people, the players? What are they going to put in? So if we can put everything in because that's the problem. Now we have our economic uh, uh, plan for 2021 to 2025. Is he going to push it uh, away? And another thing is that if you recall Obasanjo uh, program, project that time, we have what we call needs. Needs yes. translate down to seed, from seed, you know that state, from seed state to local government. If you can have an economic policy that can move from the local government to the state, then to the federal government, we ha it's possible. So we must have an economic policy, economic plan that will 
engage all the stakeholders and the economy will have a better uh, way out. Okay, gentlemen, as we round off the program, Joseph, I'm going to come to you now. What should be in front burner? Top three for you that should be in front burner for the economy. For, for the economy, we should be looking at education. Okay. I mean, investments in education and the retooling. Uh, uh, when I talk, talk about education, I'm, I'm talking about human cap uh, capacity development. You know, the truth is that for you to drive development, you need a literate uh, population. So uh, uh, basic education, we need to really look at uh, uh, that. We also need, need to look at higher, edu higher education. We turn out a lot of graduates. These graduates don't get jobs, and it's not their fault. Some of them come out with defective certificates. I mean, somebody has a degree in li linguistics. Where is going to get a job or a degree in li library science? So we need to really see how <coughs> we can retool. In five seconds, the third right. one. Re OK, <laughs> retool. I just retool the uh, educational system to make sure that it provides the needed skills and uh, competence for us to drive the economy. Yes. Then tackling corruption, then we also need to look at how we can cut the cost of governance. Okay, Dr. Igor, All right, thank three. you. And the top three, number one is security. Yes. Without security, there will not be no governments and economic development. Yes. And number two, job creation. Job creation is very, very key because if people are engaged, there's no, uh, the economy will keep uh, moving and something will come yes. out of it. And then finally, oil subsidy. <laughs> Anyone who imagines the president of Nigeria must take off the subsidy or face the consequence. And the consequence could be a revolt from Nigeria in terms of poverty level that will be increasing uh, part time. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Joseph Ago, political and economic analyst, and Dr. Aliu Elias, financial analyst. Thank you for spending your time with us on the program and lending your voice to this discussion on making the Nigerian economy better. Thank you. And that's where we wrap up the program today. Thank you for investing your time with us from wherever you are watching. Don't forget, good economics translates to good politics. So for economics to work, politics has to be in Place. Don't forget you can catch up on all the updates in the news on our social media platforms on Instagram, on YouTube, all the updates you need to know in the world of business and major news making the rounds. I am Christiana Amodu Otenya. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.